What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for July 5th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Hoping everyone had a good, safe fourth yesterday and you continue to be safe through the rest of the weekend. I had a long day, but it was a lot of fun. So coming at you a little later this morning than what I normally would, but that's okay. Let's start, I guess, with the Phils. Uh, and they had another one of those duds that every now and then you're going to have over the course of 162 games. 10-2, to 2, Christopher Sanchez struggled with his command. He said so after the game. He missed with a few pitches, and that really made the difference. Also, they could only manage to score two runs. And that's okay. They still won the series. The Braves actually lost as well, so that lead is still at nine games. Heading into a big week here, next seven days, I should say, for the Phils. Three in Atlanta this weekend, day off, and then they got three against the Dodgers. But looking forward to this weekend series against the Braves. They could essentially have an 11 or a 12-game lead. Uh, Also, it could be down to six. So it's very, very important that they play well. I think Bryce and Schwarber should be on the horizon probably. And I haven't heard any updates really uh, didn't get a chance to watch the game because we were at the pool yesterday, but I'm assuming that they would be in line to come back for the Dodgers series. But now it's all about the Braves. We have them. We haven't seen them since the beginning of the season. So it's important, I feel, to sort of, I, I don't want to say get the monkey off our backs, but I, I do think regular season-wise, if you're going to beat the Braves, you have to go down there in Atlanta and take two out of three. So Nola's on the mound tonight against Max Fried. Should be a good one. Looking forward to that. I've been talking about the John Crook is my spirit animal shirt from Philly Goat. 10% of the sale of that shirt goes to support the Battle Brothers Foundation. It's an organization that does great things for our veterans. So be sure to pick that up. 10% of your order will go toward the Battle Brothers Foundation. And then, of course, they have that. I have a toxic relationship with Philly sports because we all do. And it's just the way it is. I'm wearing my Sixers hat today knowing that they're going to suck me in again. And it's just going to end toxically. But that's okay because I am here for it. But go to phillygoat.com. Check out their shirts. I've been telling you about the shoes. I was wearing the Cape Mays yesterday because of just how comfortable they are. A lot of compliments on that. Had a little red, white, and blue sort of vibe with them as well. So go check out Philly Goat. Use the promo code JimMontgomery.com or phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. Phillygoat.com, Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. Not a lot going on in Philly sports yesterday due to the holiday. But there was, it does appear that Buddy Heald is going to the Warriors in a sign and trade. Sixers are going to get a second round pick for in 2020 or 2031. I mean, it is kind of what it is. You got something back for him. It just, he gave up, uh, I think, three second round picks to bring him in. Didn't really pan out. I, I would have, wouldn't have mind seeing him come back. But. On to, to Golden State. Sixers still need to figure out how they're going to fill out the rest of their their roster. But other than that, the Phillies and Buddy Heald, there was not a lot going on in Philly sports yesterday. And maybe that's a good thing. Eagles are less than three weeks from training camp. Flyers didn't really make any moves. But a quiet day every now and then is, is good. And we're looking forward to that phillies Brave series. All right, today we're going to go back to 1953. And on this day in 1953, the Phillies split a doubleheader at Forbes Field with the Pirates. Phillies won game one, two to nothing in 10 innings. Game two, they lost seven to four in a game that was suspended with the Phillies losing seven to nothing in the seventh. It was finished on August 11th. They made a little bit of a comeback, but ultimately over the course of about a month or so, they lost game two of that doubleheader. But I want to talk a little bit about Game 1. It was scoreless heading into the 10th inning, and then Connie Ryan and Richie Ashburn each had RBI singles in the top of the 10th. Robin Roberts pitched all 10 innings in the game, shut out the Pirates for 10 innings, so a 10-inning complete game for Robin Roberts. Ironically enough, Murray Dixon for the Pirates also pitched 10 innings in the losing effort for the Pirates. Pitchers were just built different back then. And for Robin Roberts, it was his 28th consecutive complete game, 
which sounds just ridiculous. That's a nobody's ever going to top that. He was just adorable pitcher in the 50s. Never missed the start. Led the National League in innings from 1951 to 1955. He is a Hall of Famer. And if you are keeping score at home, if you're anything like me, I like to do things like this. The Major League record is 39 consecutive complete games. And that was set back in 1904 by Jack Taylor. But just thinking about, and of course, Roberts took place over the uh, 52 and 53 season. But just thinking about 28 complete games, there's some starters that don't even start 28 games in a season now. And Robin Roberts did that in, over the course of a season. Uh, or two seasons, but enough to be. It's just, they don't build pitchers like they used to anymore. Uh, but on this day, 1953, Philly split a doubleheader with the Pirates, winning game one, losing game two. But game one was Robin, or, <clears throat> excuse me, Robin Roberts. 28th consecutive complete games which is just you can't even imagine something like that happen today that's why he's a hall of famer that's why his numbers out in ashburn alley but that happened on this day in 1953 all right let's go to our ultimate philly sports nickname tournament and recap yesterday's action out of the Ben Franklin region. It was the Kangaroo Kid pulling the slight upset over the Riverton Rifle with 78% of the vote. And then over in the Cheesesteak region, the Secretary of Defense took out Dutch with 75% of the vote. So both of those guys are moving on. The Kangaroo Kid, Billy Cunningham, the Secretary of Defense, Gary Maddox, both are moving on in our nickname tournament. Today... First matchup out of the Balboa region, we have the number two seed, the Flying Hawaiian, taking on the number 15 seed, Whitey. Let's start with Shane Victorino, the Flying Hawaiian. He was a Rule 5 pickup of the Phillies from the Dodgers in 2004. He became the full-time right, right field starter in 2006 when the Phillies traded Bobby Abreu. And then the following season after Aaron Rowan left by a free agency, he became the starting center fielder on that 2008 World Series championship team and had some clutch big hits during that 2008 run. He hit the grand slam off of CC Sabathia, uh, hit the game tying home run in game four of the NLCS against the Dodgers right before Matt Stairs won the game, was traded out of Philly, ironically enough, to the Dodgers. If you remember in that series, he kept going at, I forget the Dodgers pitcher's name, but like was saying, don't throw at my head, hit me in the back, throw me at the head. And so he became a Dodger villain while he was in Philly and then was traded to the Dodgers. Uh, he did go on to win another World Series with the Red Sox. But while in Philly, he was a two-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glover, won that World Series in 2008. And the origin of his nickname comes, one, because he's from Hawaii, and just his style of play. He has a ton of speed, a lot of flair, big clutch moments, so the flying Hawaiian. And to me, like I visualize, whenever I say the flying Hawaiian, and I don't know about you, I'm picturing after they won the World Series, him coming in and just doing the super fly snooker on top of the, the pile at the pitcher's mound. So like th this is one of those ones like I hear certain names in Harry Callis's voice. This nickname, I just see Victorino flying and jumping on the pile. Like I, it's a visual nickname for me. So the Flying Hawaiian is the two seed out of the Balboa region. He's taken on Philly's legend Richie Ashburn, the number fifteen seed Whitey, center fielder. He was a free agent, uh, amateur free agent pickup in nineteen forty five for the Phils. For a lot of folks my age and probably younger we know richie ashburn mostly as harry callis's partner on the phillies broadcast but as a player he was a hall of fame player he had a uh, while with the phillies he hit 311 over i believe it was 12 seasons 287 doubles he was a four-time all-star won two batting championships led the national league in stolen bases in 1948 his number one is retired by the phils Ashburn Alley is named after him, and the cool story about that is it's in direct line from the TV booth, and the statue they have out there was put there so Harry Callis could still watch the game with his partner. The origin of his nickname came from his light blonde hair. It was a nickname that he got in the minors and just stuck with him throughout the rest of his career, even into his days as a broadcaster. And looking at the bracket, 
Maybe Richie Ashburn is a little under seeded here. Uh, 15 seed could be a little bit of disrespect by the selection committee, but let me know your thoughts on that and then get it in. What is the better Philly sports nickname? Is it the Flying Hawaiian or is it Whitey? 267-495-8531. That'll get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. Text me that. Get anything else Philly sports related off your chest. Wasn't a lot going on, but how are we feeling heading into that Brave series? Get it in. You can also hit me up on social media, Jimbo underscore Mott, Twitter and TikTok, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, text me, whatever you got to do. But what is a better Philly sports nickname out of the Balboa region? Is it the Flying Hawaiian or is it Whitey? Get those votes in. And then our other matchup in the Schuylkill region puts our number eight seed Hollywood up against our number nine seed Bundy. Cole Hamels versus Chris Terrian. Let's start with Cole Hamels, who was the number 17 overall pick in 2002. Spent 10 years in Philly, 114 and 90. Seven shutouts, a 3.75 ERA, uh, over 1,800 strikeouts. Three-time All-Star, but probably most remembered for just being so clutch in 2008. He was the NLCS and the World Series MVP. And that postseason, he went 4-0 with a 1.8 ERA. And had it not been for the umpires just completely being clueless and having like ponds out in the middle of the infield, and they would have called or postponed that game a little sooner, likely would have been 5-0 and in the postseason. He did pitch a combined no-hitter in 2014, and then in his very last start with the Phillies before getting traded to Texas, pitched a no-hitter in 2015 on his own. The origin of his story is, obviously, he was from California. Don't understand the Hollywood. I guess everybody from California, it's Hollywood because he was from San Diego. And then when the lights were the the brightest is when he stepped up, minus that 2009 thing. Uh, Part of it was mostly it was a positive name, but sometimes we would get on him for being too Hollywood. But Hollywood Hamels is our number eight seed out of the Schuylkill region. He's taken on the number nine seed, Chris Terrian Bundy. And he's a defenseman, was drafted number 47 overall in 1990 by the Flyers. 29 goals, 130 assists, but one of the better defensemen in Flyers history. He was on that 97 Cup team that got bounced out by the Red Wings. Always a fan favorite. He does, uh, I believe he still does some uh, radio and TV work for the Flyers. Uh, unfortunately, a tragic end to his career. He took a slap shot to the throat and it forced him to retire. But the origin of his nickname is exactly what you would expect it to be. In training camp in 1904, or 1914, 1994, Craig McTavish saw him watching TV. He was watching Married with Children and he was like, you know what? You remind me of this guy. And he started calling him Bundy. And it just has stuck ever since. So Chris Terrian is probably better known as Bundy than Chris Terrian at this point. That's the sign of a good nickname. But now it's your turn. Who has the better Philly sports nickname? Is it Hollywood Cole Hamels, Bundy Chris Terrian? Let me know. 267-495-8531. That'll get you in to the Back to the Future voice and text line. And then our other matchup out of the Balboa region is the Flying Hawaiian taking on Whitey Richie Ashburn. Who do you got? Let me know. You're sitting at barbecues today. Spread the word. Put me on in the background. Again, a little bit shorter of a podcast today because there's not really much going. There wasn't much going on in Philly sports yesterday. Looking forward to that Phillies Brave series, though. It's going to be a hot one. But be safe. Stay hydrated. Don't do anything stupid with fireworks. Make sure you have all your fingers at the end of the day. On this day in 1953, the Phillies split a doubleheader with the Pirates. But it was Robin Roberts winning game one, going 10 innings for his 28th consecutive complete game. The streak would end in his next start. But just an incredible accomplishment that you can't even, like even today, to pitch one complete game is a big deal. In order, But then he did 28 consecutive. That's just crazy, man. That's crazy. But... That all happened on this day in 1953. Be sure to vote for your favorite Philly sports nickname, the number two seed Flying Hawaiian, the number 15 Whitey out of the Balboa region, and then the number eight seed Hollywood Cole Hamels taking on the number nine seed Bundy out of the Chris Terrian out of the Schuylkill region. 
Let's go, Phils. We need some playoff NOLA tonight. It's going to be a big game atmosphere, I'm sure, in Atlanta. Uh, maybe more so for us than what it is for the, the folks in Atlanta, but that's okay because it's a big game, division rivalry, and if you're going to if you're going to win the division, you have to beat the Braves. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for July 5th, 2024. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Friday. It is a feel good Friday, even though it's a holiday weekend. It's every day. It's a it's a feel good Friday. So go out, have some fun, but be safe. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>